Now, imagine going through life struggling to understand other people, feeling that you didn't fit in, only to discover in adulthood that you were on the autistic spectrum. It's an experience an increasing number of women are going through, as awareness grows that autism is far more common in girls and women than previously thought. Psychologists say girls can be much better at masking their autistic traits, but pay a heavy price for doing so. New national diagnostic guidelines highlight the fact that many girls go undiagnosed. This report from Barbara Miller. So see, there's a turtle coming back again as well. Oh yeah, there's two. There is two. Hers were a lot of sort of sensory issues, so like tags on clothes would drive her mental. Things like socks, the stitching in the socks, like if that wasn't sitting right we'd lose it. And then getting the phone call from school because they couldn't calm her down because she couldn't use a toilet with a pink door. <gasps> There's native bees! There is native bees in there, isn't there? Six-year-old Felicity was diagnosed with autism last year to the surprise of her mum, Emma yeah. Taylor. Let's have a look on the other side. Autism wasn't on my radar at all to begin with because I, I, I wasn't aware that girls could have autism when I first took her. Felicity is bright and bubbly, but is already repeating a school year, often overwhelmed by the environment there. Sometimes when I tell some people to be quiet, they don't and they just go noisy. Do they? That's not and a very nice thing. And it gives me a headache. The process of her daughter's diagnosis resulted in a startling realisation for the Ipswich mum when she began to ask herself, was she also on the spectrum? I think my journey sort of began um, when the psychologist that we went to see for her um, diagnosis started going through, you know, have you seen this in her, have you seen that in her? And I was sort of sitting there thinking, well, I, I do similar things to that, like that was me as a kid. Up until then, Emma had spent her life feeling like she didn't fit in. I used to get, you know, a bag of Skittles and I'd group them into colours and if they were uneven numbers, I'd have to even them up before I could then like eat them all type thing and I thought, oh, you know, I'm just, just weird type thing and um, obviously my mum had picked up on that as well when I was a kid. I remember her taking me to the doctor when I was about eight or nine and going, she's not normal, there's something wrong with her. Emma Taylor says for years she was mistakenly treated for anxiety and depression but just last month, she finally also received a diagnosis of autism. For me, that was a relief. It was finally an answer. It wasn't anymore, what's wrong with me? It's, I'm just different. And that was a big thing for me. Just this way, and I'll show you where my room is. Michelle Garnett, a Brisbane-based clinical psychologist who specialises in autism, says many girls are left undiagnosed because they've learned to hide their symptoms. They're coming into their kindy, preschool and early years watching other girls, learning how to socialise, how to have reciprocal conversations, how to play. And they're amazing. It's like we need to give them an Oscar for that performance, but a performance that is totally exhausting them. They're melting down, they're, they can engage in self-harm from a very young age, they start experiencing anxiety, depression, and they start often to isolate themselves. I never got on with other kids and I don't know, I'd make a big deal with like about some small issue that other kids would be fine with. And I was like, why wasn't I like other kids? 14-year-old Izzy Stokes from the Hunter region of New South Wales was diagnosed with autism three years ago. I finally kind of figured out what was going on. It's like, now I can finally get help. Now at least I know more about it. I know how I work a bit differently. And I'll just make sure I have like a strategy to help me with coping, with being in a big group of people because that is really stressful. So you didn't want to go to the fundraising dance thing this weekend? There was no fundraising dance thing this weekend. No, it's this weekend coming. What fundraising dance thing? For RDA. Where? 
I ain't dancing for nobody. They ain't paying me. Izzy's mum, Sarah, says it took seven years of visits to doctors before her daughter was diagnosed. I knew in my heart that there was a difference um, in her and that's why I kept pursuing it um, because I didn't want her to go through life feeling like I did. <laughs> you are funny. And then for Sarah Stokes, her moment of realisation. Six months after Izzy's diagnosis that I began to think, I think that this is me as well. <laughs> I was just going down the list thinking, oh, tick, tick, <laughs> tick, tick. Later that year, she received her own autism diagnosis, but alongside the relief came grief and regret. I went to university twice and dropped out both times. I set myself in possibly high standards. Um, if a lecturer gave me a reading list, I'd feel I had to read every book. I suppose I spent most of my life thinking I was a complete failure. Cases like Izzy and Sarah's and Felicity and Emma's have underlined the need for Australia's first national diagnostic guidelines, which have just been submitted to the National Health and Medical Research Council for endorsement. The guidelines say clinicians should be aware among girls on the spectrum of a tendency to imitate others in social interactions and a tendency to camouflage difficulties by masking. Historically, four times as many boys have been diagnosed with autism than girls. Psychologist Michelle Garnett believes the growing awareness of autism in girls and women could significantly alter the gender ratio. For a few decades now, we've considered that for every one girl, there's four boys on the autism spectrum. We now think the ratio is one to two. So many more girls than we first thought. If I bring the bug catcher, it could have catched maybe one. Caught. Caught. Yeah. Back in Queensland, Emma Taylor is determined to ensure her daughter's early diagnosis means her childhood will be a happy one. I can help her now grow up without thinking that there's something wrong with her and that's something that we make a really big deal about to her. There's nothing wrong with her, she's just different.